Welcome to the TIPNG Vodcast. This is a podcast for Papua New Guineans and those interested in the elections in Papua New Guinea in 2022. It gives us news behind the news and insights from people making the news. On today's episode, uh, we have an interesting guest from Caritas Papua New Guinea. I'll allow her to introduce herself and tell us a bit about herself. Thank you very much, Yua. Um, good morning, viewers. My name is Mavis Tito. I am the National Director of Caritas PNG. I have been with Caritas PNG since 2019. Um, and, but prior to that, from 20, 2007 to 2014. Oh, so that's quite a, a long time, Mavis. I think it's almost uh, 10 years. And um, in that time that you spent with uh, Caritas PNG, um, what has been a highlight for you? What's a moment that's uh, really stood out where you felt the full impact of the work that you were doing within the organization? My interest in, in Caritas PNG spans from the fact that it is a community-driven um, organization. Um, I love the fact that the focus is on the grassroots and at the community level. And for me, a highlight of my time at Caritas PNG was empowering a community in a logging um, development area in the Western province um, to em- by empowering them um, in knowing their rights um, on their resources and making the decision to be a, a, an equal player in resource development in the province. And what is it about that impact of people in the grassroots reinforcing that rights that really appeals to you. Um, Would you say it's the uh, involvement of the communities? Is it the realization of their potential? What is it about that instance you mentioned about uh, communities that have logging rights, defending those rights that really um, stands out for you? Yeah, it is, um, you know, a lot of our people live in the rural areas um, and information um, and messages getting to them is a huge problem. Um, they have no access to um, communication sometimes. Um, there's just no way sometimes of them getting the right kind of information. So for us, um, a study was actually conducted and found out that um, people have been entering into agreements, especially resource owners have been entering into agreements that um, they had not much information about um, their own rights first firstly, to make that decision um, whether to engage in one or not, um, the harmful effects of, um, or the negative repercussions of these agreements they're, they're getting them th- themselves into. And so we realized that without educating um, these resource owners on their rights to their resources, um, they would continue to make the same mistakes. Um, and, and so developers would, would go in and, and, and you know, um, operate sometimes illegally or out of line. Um, and so we, whilst we are an institution that um, has certain priority areas, we, we may not have the expertise in some areas. So we identified um, resource people, and in this case, a lawyer um, from Selco, um, who, who went back that's to this... the Center for Environmental Law and Community Rights. That's correct. Um, so we engaged a lawyer from Selco to go back to this um, community and teach them their basic rights um, to their resources. A really good outcome from this training was that the people were now equipped with the right kind of information um, to, to guide them in future negotiations uh, with regards to their resources. Mm. The, one of the outcomes was that the, when the permit, the timber permit for the operations were coming to an end um, and the company and the government went back to the people to negotiate the new terms, the people by now already knew what, what they wanted. Um, in these agreements and so for us that was a really positive um, outcome from our intervention. That's a a really fantastic example and I think it also sets the scene for the kind of work that Caritas PNG does and you mentioned they're really about defending human rights and making sure the people um, within Papua New Guinea were able to realize those rights and you know fundamentally not to have those uh, rights abused or or taken away by other actors and um, I think it's good example for us to reflect on as we 
as we look at the work of Caritas PNG. And for our listeners and viewers who might be hearing about Caritas Papua New Guinea for the first time, um, could you just explain to us what is Caritas PNG and what does it do? Caritas PNG is the justice-based relief and development agency of the Catholic Bishops Conference of PNG and Solomon Islands. Um, we were actually established in 1974, a year before independence, which was just about the time the Catholic Bishops Conference of PNG and Solomon Islands was incorporated. Back then we were known as the Catholic Commission for Justice, Peace and Development. We changed our name to Caritas PNG in 2000 um, when we became a member of the broader Caritas Internationalist Confederation, which currently comprises of about 169 uh, member organizations worldwide. Um, we also a part of the Caritas Oceania um, um, family, which comprises of Caritas Australia, Caritas New Zealand, Caritas Fiji, Caritas Tonga, Caritas Samoa, and Caritas PNG, of course. Together, our focus is, is development, um, justice and peace, integral human development, and humanitarian work. And I think the humanitarian aspect of it, of our work, is what's um, globally known. Um, but each Caritas member organization has different priorities based on the local context in which um, we operate. That's uh, really a broad depth and history there in the organization and the movement. You mentioned in Papua New Guinea you've been here since 1974 with over 169 different um, chapters, would I say, or different um, examples of the movement across the globe. Um, there's a lot of lessons to be learned and a lot of insights that have been gained from the work. Um, within Papua New Guinea, and what is your main mission? Um, you mentioned social justice and human development. What are the key um, objectives of Caritas PNG at the moment? Yeah, so in PNG, we have a network of 19 um, diocese and Caritas coordinators, that's one per diocese as per the Catholic Church structure in PNG. Our priority areas um, integral human development, um, peace building, um, advocacy and research, and um, Lenten Appeal. Our Lenten Appeal program, which is uh, our internal fundraising mechanism to, to drive our work. Which is underway at the moment, I think it's also the it season of Lent, and so it's also a busy Lent. time. It's a busy time for the for the church, and you mentioned the uh, integral human development there, and I think for our, our listeners and viewers, we'll also see similar wording reflected in the Papua New Guinea national constitution as being one of the, I think five uh, national goals and directive principles. The separate. first. The first actually, integral human development. Uh, is that because Caritas is drawn from that wording? What's the connection there? Yes, so Caritas um, globally um, bases all its work on the Catholic social teachings mm -hmm. which promotes integral human development, so the development of the human person. Um, we believe that the development of a human person needs to be holistic, um, just building a hospital or a school or a road in a community is in development for us in, in our um, view. Um, it's got to be inclusive of the person or the people in the community as well. Um, and we see a lot of times um, deterioration of infrastructure in the communities. Um, why is that happening? Who is responsible for the care and maintenance of these people? Well, these things cannot last if the people living in these areas and utilizing these services uh, and develop themselves sure. um, in, uh, in understanding the importance, the significance, or the relevance of, of these services and play their part in also um, caring for these services. I think that's one of the fundamental principles of democracy as well, you know. Uh, it's each citizen taking responsibility and having that civic uh, duty. And you mentioned um, the Catholic Church, I guess, is the, the overarching umbrella. Maybe you could also explain for our listeners what's that relationship like between Caritas, PNG, and the Catholic Church? Are you like a, a committee within the church? Is it a secretariat? What's the day-to-day -day relationship between Caritas, PNG, and the Catholic Bishops' Conference in PNG? Yeah, so Caritas, PNG, um, although we are in 
agency of the Catholic Bishops Conference of PNG and Solomon Islands, we form a, 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 part, a broader part of that structure. Um, and so we are just one commission of the Catholic Bishops Conference in PNG and Solomon Islands. So other commissions will be the um, Catholic education, Catholic health, um, youth, family life, um, social communications, um, and there, there are quite a few others uh, which I have not mentioned, but that's how we fit into the broader structure of the church in PNG. Yeah, and I think um, for listeners, th this is something that uh, is a, a basic reality in Papua New Guinea, where the government is not able to reach, they say the church is rich, and it's that network you mentioned, the 19 dioceses that um, Caritas and the Catholic Church work through. Um, and often for Papua New Guineans, we see the church through the social services, whether it's health uh, or education and other services um, that are run by the church. But I guess elections and politics is a bit of a different one. Uh, people often don't see maybe the church or in, in the church partners and faith-based organizations being involved in the elections. Maybe you can just give us what is the connection between Caritas Papua New Guinea's mandate, and you mentioned social justice and peace, and the elections in Papua New Guinea. Has it been something that's been happening since your inception in 1974? And where's that linkage? We, as a church agency, um, believe and agree with a lot of comments um, out there in the public, perhaps, about um, the church, that the church should not be you know, involved in politics. Um, and that's true. But the fact is we are not involved in politics. We are actually um, just a means of um, a medium to circulate vital information to the people. Um, the people that the government serves are also served by the church. So we cannot isolate the, the two. Um, it, it's in fact our responsibility also um, to be providing um, our citizens with the right kind of information, not just service delivery, which the church also does too. And in fact, in some areas where the government um, services are lacking, the church is providing vital service um, to the people. Um, and we also um, are, are there with the people through our network most of the time. We are, we're actually present with the people, and so we recognize that the challenges and the struggles that that people um, face um, daily. Uh, and so the kind of government that we, we elect um, and mandate to take us through the next five years is, is a huge um, concern for the church as well. And as Caritas, we, we want to be um, seen as contributing to change, positive change, through the um, representatives that our people um, elect to parliament and so it is very important that we also play our part in, in providing the, the right kind of information um, and messages to our people um, to empower them to make the right decisions um, when it comes time for voting. Um, our program that we are currently um, running nationwide, which is the voter education program, is nonpartisan. It is not supporting any particular candidate or candidates or political party or political parties. It's neutral. It's all about educating our voting population to be able to make the right decisions um, at polling. Yeah, thank you, Mavis, really articulating the clear distinction about how the church appro uh, approaches um, the issue of civic awareness and civic participation in decision making so that services are improved in the country. I think that's very clear. Um, for those uh, listening and joining, this is the TIPNG podcast. Um, my guest uh, today is Mavis Tito, who's the director for Caritas PNG, and we're discussing the work of Caritas PNG, um, particularly in the lead up to the elections. And as uh, Mavis just mentioned, Caritas PNG has uh, released a set of election awareness materials in February for Papua New Guineans to use for the forthcoming National General elections. I think before we go into the materials themselves, and you mentioned that um, that uh, that rationale behind the Caritas involvement in election awareness, maybe you could also just give us a bit of context that's informed the recent election awareness. What's the historical engagement? Um, you started in 1974. Have you always been involved in the elections, or is this more of a recent uh, development? And what's the thinking behind that and lessons learned from that engagement on elections in Papua New Guinea? I'm not too sure about 
I can only speak for the time I have been with Caritas PNG and um, whatever records were available when I was with Caritas PNG. But um, from that, um, Caritas PNG has been involved in the uh, voter education for the 1997 elections, 2002 elections, 2007 elections, and 2012 elections. Um, Caritas was also involved in the 2012 local level government elections as well as the um, 2012 Bougainville elections. Um, so over the years, um, it has um, come to come to notice that our people in the rural areas are the ones that miss out a lot on vital information. Um, and so over the years, that has been um, the target for Caritas's work. We also um, learned that a lot of good information and messaging um, in the main centers, the towns and the cities, uh, are taken for granted by um, by the residents. the residents, and so you know, and and it, and it re reflects in in the outcomes of some of the elections. Um, for instance, informal ballot papers, you would notice uh, residents or electorates in the main centers seems to, seem to be the ones that are creating a lot of, of these mistakes. Um, and so we realized that, you know, we are here, they are here, they receive all this information, but still continue to, you know, um, not do well in, in the electoral process. Um, but there are people out there that are really um, genuine and really need change, need to see change, but they don't know how to, or, you know, no one's taking the messages to them. So that has been our focus in, in the past um, elections. And each year, or each election time, we try to improve our materials um, so that they are, they're friendly, um, they, they can be easily understood, and um, that they are, we're able to translate them into the three main, um, two other main Languages. languages are Pidgin and, and Motu um, for our, our uses. Um, we realized also that we may be the only um, faith-based organization that's um, f really heavily uh, involved in voter education. So we don't, we are aware of, of our uses and those that may want to also utilize our materials. So you will notice that all our materials are um, um, user friendly. They can be used by anyone at any level by any other um, um, denominations as well. So the community focused, I think, is yeah, an important fo thing. Focus. An issue focused as opposed to being particularly, you know, one messaging or for one group of citizens. That's it's right. user friendly for everyone. And in terms of the materials that you've developed and you've alluded to, um, what is the actual content of the awareness package that you have, and what's the plan that you have for? for dissemination of this information? Our materials have, uh, have evolved over time, um, depending on the need and where we feel um, our messaging should be more focused on. Um, so for this current program, we have um, developed materials targeting the youth, the women, um, a, a cause and effect poster, for instance, um, if, if, if you sell your vote, um, then obviously you're not careful about choosing your re the representative you want representing you in parliament, and so service delivery will, will, will not be um, turned out well in, in your electorate. Um, but if you vote genuinely with a good heart, with proper you know assessment of of, a, of the representative that you want representing you, then the positive results will be there. So. Um, that's what we call the cause and effect poster. And, the and this is captured on a poster. And a simple election guideline. Um, so 10 guidelines on, on general conduct of elections. Um, and an information booklet on various um, um, short um, topics um, covering um, rights and responsibilities, the limited preferential voting, um, you know, simple examples of bribery and corruption, um, what people can look out for and try to avoid, and, and what the good things that they should look out for um, to help them make their decisions when it comes polling. We have also produced a jingle, which will be playing on 
on some radio stations soon um, and we are currently produ producing a video um, to the jingle which will be played on NBC and uh, TV One in, in coming weeks. It's excellent so it's fair to say it's a it's a multimedia approach you have posters um, and you said in the, all three national languages you also have that booklet and you have a video and accompanying jingle that will be going I'm assuming also nationwide um, in terms of the materials that you have, um, how can people access them? Are you going through the dioceses and giving out information that way? Are they available maybe through partners or online? What's the what's the way you're looking at disseminating that information? Yes. Um, so one thing I forgot to mention earlier was our target for this voter education program. Our target um, for this work is the rural areas and um, the youth. Uh, because we have been informed by the Electoral Commission that youth participation in the last election was very poor. And so we are um, we're using them twofold, not um, just um, as a beneficiary of our information, but also utilizing them to dis disseminate our information to their peers um, and to the rural areas. Rural areas because they miss out on a lot of information and they can't access that through other um, medium so we go in person to to disseminate the information to them we are utilizing our 19 diocesan caritas coordinators um, to take out to roll out the messaging to selected rural areas because of the you know vast geography that we have to cover um, they have carefully identified which rural communities that do not to, that seem to be at a disadvantage most of the times, and that's that's where the focus is. Um, we have our program was in two phase is in two phases. The first phase has gone, which was creation of the our IEC materials and all of that, um, a training where we brought in all our nineteen characters coordinators to Port Mosby to train on the materials to ensure that every one of them and their teams were speaking the same language um, and, and to make sure that they understood the content of the material. Um, we didn't want, you know, someone saying something quite differently to, to the others. So that was the intention of bringing them all in to train them on, on the materials and the messaging. Um, they have all gone back and they will be utilizing the church's network to go out to the rural, re try to reach the rural areas to disseminate the information. We have also engaged some universities, a couple of, not a couple, but three or four of our university, uh, to our universities to help us also in, in spreading the message within their institutions and also within the townships in which they, they exist. I think um, it's really interesting that you mentioned your target audience uh, are particularly young people. And for our viewers and listeners who might be young students who are on university campuses in Papua New Guinea, or young people in, in society, maybe even young Catholics, um, if they're interested in accessing these materials or finding out where their diocese officer is, um, what's the best way, what's the best advice you'd have for them if they want to be also involved and be part of this uh, dissemination team that you've mentioned in terms of either on campuses or within the targeted communities that you have? What's the best way that young people can help uh, Caritas PNG? They can reach out to our diocese and Caritas coordinators. They can even reach out to us. We have a Facebook page if they look us up and you know um, get in touch with us through that we have also we've got some information available which we can we can share with them um, we I'm sure TI also um, would like some of these materials to also share with with your your partners and we so we can organize that um, interestingly the PNG Electoral Commission also requested for our materials to to form part of the um, candidates' information packages. Oh, that's excellent. So they've asked for, um, they're preparing candidates' information packs for about 200 candidates per electorate. So that's a huge quantity that um, they are asking for. And so we'll see how we can support them with that. That's uh, excellent. And I think we often forget about our candidates too. <laughs> they need to be informed, and I'm sure they will really. Uh, learn a lot from the booklet that Caritas PNG has put together. Um, I think one of the things that 
we often find is that now that we're getting closer to the elections, uh, people feel that maybe awareness should have been done earlier, maybe that information should have gone out. But at TIPNG, we've always said that, look, if you have the information there, it's up to you to use it and to see how much good we can do out of the things that we do have. So thank you for extending that invitation to listeners and uh, viewers of the TIPNG broadcast to reach out to Caritas PNG if they're interested in supporting the dissemination of those materials. What has the reaction been like? Uh, you had your 19 offices in and I've read in the papers about the materials being run. I think there was a, a workshop in uh, Simbu in Kuniawa and people were saying that you know this will need to be used to reinforce some of the practices that's been going on. Um, what has your reaction been from people that have already taken the materials out to the communities? Have you got any feedback? I think because of the simplicity of our messages and, and the fact that they have been translated to Pidgin and Motu, they have been widely welcomed by um, the users, the, the public out there. The young people especially, when you, know, when you, have, when you produce something that's targeting a, a specific group, um, it kind of gives them a, a feeling of inclusion mm -hmm. and, and participation and it encourages and motivates them. So I think with the, the poster targeting the youth especially um, has been welcomed by our young people um, and they see, um, they feel encouraged to participate in, in the activity. And it also um, opens their minds and their view and perception on elections and the importance of their involvement. Um, so that's a general um, reaction we're getting from the young people, but also the women. Uh, we dedicated a poster to, to the women, you know, and, and, and to educate everyone uh, that, that politics is also for women. It's for everyone. who It, it, it is everyone's democratic right to engage in, in this in these kinds of activities of, of national interest. And if women can be doctors, pilots, and whatever, they can also be politicians. So um, again, that, that speaks to the general public to give them that, especially in, in volatile situations uh, in certain parts of, of the country, we know it's, it can be very violent and very unsafe for women to participate. So it's also a call to, to the general public to allow the women that space, the freedom, um, to exercise their, their democratic right to either stand for elections or um, vote freely without fear or intimidation during the elections. That's really um, cr crucial. We have to have free, fair and safe elections. And when we say free, that means that everyone has to be able to exercise their right without any coercion mm -hmm. and fair when we want to see everyone in society have that equal ability to participate regardless of gender as you mentioned or ability education level and fundamentally it has to be safe we can't have violent elections and just uh, circling back to that feedback that you received from particularly young voters i think um, it's really important and it ties back to that message of integral human development that um, caritas is seeking to to achieve in papua new guinea um, as we as we come to the end of this particular episode um, we also have to acknowledge that this is, I guess, a space that uh, faith-based organizations, and you mentioned uh, slightly about we, would, we don't want to see any violence in our elections, and often churches and church representatives are respected figures in the community, and they're able to tell people and reinforce those messages. What do you see as you know the role of churches and faith-based organizations in our communities in the period leading up to the election? What, do we sh what should we be expecting? Um, yeah, it's really important that um, all, not, not just the Catholic Church, I think um, Caritas PNG is the only faith-based organization um, at present that's engaged in voter education. Um, and I think, you know, I encourage the other churches to also um, um, be providing messages on, on free fair elections to, to their congregations. I mean, as I said earlier, our materials are open to any anyone to use. They are not specific to the Catholic Church. So, to our you know other Christians out there who you know might want to get involved in this and require some materials, they can approach us and 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 get these materials. Um, and Caritas Benji is only doing its part and and what it can, but. The voice and the influence rests with the, our church hierarchy. So mm -hmm. we have the PNG Council of Churches, um, 
you know, it would be really good. And I, and I appeal to them also to, to continuously remind our people um, on the importance of elections and to ensure that we conduct it peacefully and safely, be responsible, respect each other, um, ensure it's violent free, and um, that people are really, really taking the time to um, to identify the right kind of representatives they can um, vote for in the elections. Vote buying and all these illegal activities that happen during elections, um, we should be at a stage now to know very well that those are wrong and they don't bring us anything good um, in the future. Um, so we complain about lack of services, lack of basic delivery. But then it, you know, we don't question ourselves and the part we played during um, elections and whether we contributed to, to the situation we find ourselves in currently. So um, yeah, just an appeal to the other churches to be also um, speaking up um, for our, our free fair elections in June um, and encouraging people their constituents or their um, followers to make the right decisions and vote the right kind of representatives into parliament. Yeah. And yeah, as you mentioned, the elections are just around the corner. And I know that everyone's focused. Uh, we have issue of writs uh, on April. And then we have that whole electoral process that will take us about two months or so before hopefully we have a new government in uh, or elected government in by August. Um, I think everyone's focused on delivering these elections. Um, but maybe as we as we end this episode, um, what is what can be done by faith-based organizations, church networks after the elections? What should be some of the things we should be thinking? You know, a few steps ahead after these elections are concluded, how can we make this more part of what the churches should be doing in terms of their social programs in the country? All the churches are part of this. Um, program called the Church Partnership Program, which is funded by the Australian government. Um, we, the phase three is winding down in June, and then phase four will be starting in July. And the focus of the new phase, which is um, a period of four years, is amongst others is social accountability. And so I think that is um, already a, a, a platform uh, for for the churches to to stand on and our focus should be empowering our people across the nation on holding their leaders their elected representatives to account for for service delivery in in their in their electorates um, so for us as um, Caritas PNG our our aim going forward is to use that that program but also not just that program but our existing voter education program in our network um, to continuously drive these messages and tie that into the church partnership program you know on a broader level um, coming up with some um, monitoring tools um, that we can educate our people on how to use what to look out for um, and becoming more actively engaged in the development in, in their electorates and working with their representatives to make sure that service delivery flows all the way down to the grassroots level. And if it's not happening, then why not? And, and empowering them to ask the questions um, rather than just you know sitting back. Um, I think everyone is fed up of that. We ourselves are also fed up of seeing our people struggle. Um, especially in, in in the rural areas, so um, but they can't speak up, they can't take action if they don't know how to. So it is something that we are, you know, position uh, positioning ourselves in and and um, trying to re strategize in in how best we can work with with our people in the rural areas to um, to better hold their their leaders and their local, um, not just the national leaders, but those at the local yeah, level, sure. to to be more accountable to to them. Excellent, and I think that's a really inspiring note to, to end on. Um, we have to always have that uh, future in mind and always strive for those outcomes that uh, not only our Papua New Guinean people are entitled to, but deserve. Um, so thank you so much, 
Mavis for joining us um, on this episode of the TIPNG podcast. Um, for more information, um, I encourage people as uh, listeners, viewers, as mentioned by Mavis, to visit the Caritas PNG Facebook page. Um, we'll also have in the show notes some of the links that Mavis has mentioned so that you can also access information. Uh, this has been an episode of the TIPNG podcast uh, brought to you by TIPNG through the PNG Australia Partnership Program. And uh, we look forward to joining you by having you join us on future episodes. Thank you, Mavis, for joining us. Thank you, you are.